Hi and welcome to Creating Tables Part 2. So in this lecture, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can create two tables at the same time and how you can add con uh, constraints in a professional way and in, in a not so professional way. So first we are going to go with the not professional way. So I'm just going to say uh, right up front, I'm going to say not recommended, recommended. All right. So how we can create a table is we use the create tables command. So we are going to say create table. Now we have removed our students table, so we need to recreate it. So it is going to be create table students and then we are going to add the columns. So I'm going to say the first column is going to be student underscore ID. This is going to be an integer. And it's going to be not null as well as primary key. So primary key. The next column is going to be first name. First underscore name. Uh, this is going to be a varying character. So I'm just going to say 255. You can you can change it. Doesn't really matter. And let's create the next one as well. And that is going to be last name. Varchar, varying character, 255. And there we go. So we have created our uh, students table. I will be zooming out a little bit. So I'm sure you can still see these. These are uh, readable. Now let's create the second table. I'm going to say create table. Uh, I'm going to call this email underscore address. And uh, let's create that table. Perfect. So the first column is going to be email address underscore ID. Now this is going to be an integer. It's going to be primary key, therefore it's going to be not null. So I'm just going to copy everything from there and put it here. The next one is going to be the email address itself. So it's going to have an ID. Then we are going to have the email address and I'm going to give it var char 255. So 255 and we are going to come down here. Now, we are going to have an email address a student ID. Now this is going to be the foreign key and this foreign key is going to reference the student ID primary key in the students table. So this is a foreign key. And um, now to be able to add this constraint of foreign key, now we want to tell this database that this is a foreign key. This key is actually a foreign key belonging or referencing the student ID. How can we do that? So the first way is, of course, not recommended. And that is whenever you just go ahead and provide the constraint within one of your tables. And that is like, usually it is within the last table. I'm going to tell you why this is a bad, bad practice, why this is not recommended in just a couple of minutes. So we have our constraint. So we have our constraint. We are going to name that FK because it is foreign key. What is the name? So we are going to say it is email address student underscore ID. What is the type? It is foreign key. So foreign key. What column does it belong to? It belongs to the email address student ID. I'm just going to copy it from there, put it there. What does it reference? So references. Uh, which table does it reference? It references the students table. And what column in the students table? It is going to be the student ID. So this is how you can create a cons constraint. Basically, this is the entire idea of relational databases. So you have one table, uh, you have three columns for within that, and you have a completely different table for a different kind of data. But there is one column within this table that is going to reference the first table in a way that it is going to change based on this. Uh, so this is going to be like, this is the relationship of these two tables, this foreign key, primary key. And that is basically emphasizing on the relational model that we have been talking about so much. So if I run this, 
everything is, is run there are no errors so that's a good sign let's refresh this you can see that we got two uh, two tables so we have the email address table of course there is no data that's besides the point the point is that we have basically created two tables now if we go into settings for each specific table I'm just gonna bring this here come on buddy uh, it's not moving anyway so you can see that the students table we said that the student ID has to be primary key and not no the first name there are basically no other constraints uh, and um, so this is the primary key and if we come to the foreign key the student table doesn't have any foreign keys now if I come to the email address you can see we do have a primary key in here as well there is something else that I need to show you so the default value for any column columns value is going to be null unless you change that to not null so if you select not null the null is going to go away but the default is always going to be null so in here you can see the default is null but if I come here to the foreign keys you can see that this is our foreign key so what is the name we we prefix it with the key, type of key it is so it is foreign key fk we have our email address student id what does it reference it references the sql database from there it is going to reference the student id you can see a better representation in here so column this column references this column within this table so we have basically created that now what is the problem here why I'm saying that this is a bad practice the reason for that is now now this is a very simple case and in this case I guess you could do that and there are not going to be any uh, repercussions that you need to worry about but let's say you have a big database you have you're working on a, on a large project or you're working on any kind of project which is going to end up with it you're gonna end up with a complicated database now in that case what if you try to reorder these tables so what if you bring this create table students below this um, email address so if I were to grab cut, uh, cut that and put it right here now what is the problem with this now the problem with this is something called a forward dependency issue what does forward dependency issue says it says that you're trying to reference a column within a table that as far as this table is concerned it has not yet been created so you're trying to access it and if you run it you're gonna get an error now I need to drop these two so just to show you that you're gonna get an error so I'm just gonna drop these two come on drop table drop now perfect so if I run this if I bring this up you're gonna see that you're gonna get an error the reason that you're gonna get an error is you're trying to access a table that doesn't exist and that is the students table so as far as this line is concerned when this is run it is going to look for any existing students table it's not been created so you're gonna end up with an error so this is called the forward dependency issue and what is the solution in here so the solution is I'm just gonna bring uh, I'm just gonna uh, bring them back in here I'm gonna save that I could zoom in a little bit more just to show you better so let's clear everything from there so now you see that this is the bad practice way right this is not recommended I'm gonna grab everything I could grab everything and I could comment them out so I'm just gonna comment out everything and there we go perfect so let's save that so if you run it must have at least one variable viable visible call so anyway oh I did not comment that part out so let me put that here let's remove this space let's run it perfect so nothing we don't have any errors now what is the recommended way of doing it so let's come down here let's put it to recommend it so the recommended way is using an alter statement the alter statement is going to grab this constraint command this constraint query and it is going to extract it from your table so typically whenever you're uh, looking at anyone else's uh, database the best practice way is that you're going to see that first 
uh, that person is going to create or you're going to create your tables and whenever you're done creating your tables for example you have 50 100 tables or 20 or 30 or 10 tables it doesn't matter how many tables but we're, but when you're done with all your tables you put all of your constraints in a in an outer statement and how does that work so i will be just copying these because just to save some time so if i come down here so this is our create tables this is going to create for us the students table and this let me just copy that put it right here and i'm going to remove that com uh, comma and i'm going to come down here let's close it and terminate it and this is going to create for us the email address table now where is where are the constraints how can we add the constraints now uh, I'm going to show you after I've I've added the alter statement that if you try to remove uh, one of these tables you're going to get an error I'm we are going to go over that towards the end of this lecture I just want to show you how this alter table actually works so first you're going to write alter table which is going to bring changes into a table then you have to specify which which table it is that you want to bring changes into that is the email address what do you want to do with it what is the kind of change the type it is constraint so constraint add a con you want to add a constraint what is the constraint name it is fk we could uh, copy the name just to save some time so this is the name what is the type of the constraint so you're going to say foreign key what does it reference which column does it reference you need to provide the column so which table does it reference now uh, which column do, uh, now sorry which column does this foreign key belong to and then you're going to say which table it references it references the students table now within the students table which column does it reference it is going to reference the id column and then let's close this we are going to go over the syntax one more time so you're going to say i want to alter table the email address table and what is the type of alteration it is adding a constraint what is the name of the constraint this is the name of the constraint what is the type of the constraint it is this one which column does this constraint belong to it belongs to this column within the email address table and which column does it reference so it need because it's a foreign key it needs to reference a primary key so it is going to reference the students table along with the student id column which is the primary key so you have to keep this in mind it has to be a primary key now let's go ahead and save this and run this and there we go we are done let's refresh the schemas and if we go into email address you can see that we have our changes if we go to foreign key we basically got the same thing we got column and then we have referenced column now which column is going to throw an error if you try to remove it we are going to go over the theory first then i'm going to show you well basically which one is going to uh, throw an error now this is recommended this is best practice because you whenever you're creating your tables you don't worry okay which table has to come first and which table has to come last you don't worry about that and that is something that you should not be concerned about you should just go ahead and create your tables in a like casual fashion and then whenever you want to add constraints they just use an alter statement and try to add constraints now if we try to uh, remove this uh, the uh, students table are we going to th uh, get an error or not we are going to get an error why because the students table is being referenced when it is being referenced it means that there is a string being latched onto it so if you remove this table it means that you're trying to remove that link which is not removable now first you need to you need to release the anchor from the bottom of the sea the anchor is this email address when you release it then the, this ship is going to be able to move or to sail <laughs> in that manner so if we go ahead and if we try to remove this um, students table we are going to get an error so within a comment i'm going to say drop table students because remember the anchor is in the sea so you're, you will not be able to sail the ship uh, for that matter 
So if I run this, you get an error. Why? Because it says cannot drop tables, table students, referenced by a foreign key constraint. Because it is being referenced. Now, can we, so we cannot sail our boat or our ship, but can we really, can we like, uh, like uh, grab the anchor? I'm, I'm not really uh, sure what the correct terminology is. Can we like pull back the, uh, pull up the anchor so the ship can move? So if we cannot delete the ship, can we delete the anchor? Let's, let's take a look at that as well. I'm sure you're getting what I'm saying. So what is it that is holding on to this, ta this student's table? We need to delete that relationship, then we can delete the student's table. So I'm going to say email underscore address. Let's run this command. So if you select it and click, it is going to run. And there we go. Drop email address and refresh there we have we don't have an email address table and now if i run this you can see that this is run and all both of our tables are deleted i'm just going to go ahead and create them one more time there we go let's refresh that and here we have email address and students table that's it for this lecture and before actually wrapping this lecture up i'm going to tell you something about the upcoming three chapters so we are going to talk about sqlite MySQL and Postgres uh, DBMSs. Uh, the reason that we are talking about these is because we are now, we have a, a proper understanding of SQL and SQL implementation, SQL syntax. Within the MySQL, now the MySQL just, it's, it was, its purpose was just to provide us with an environment, with an relatively easier environment, like a visual kind of environment, where we had our tables and we could, take a look at our tables in a visual manner like in the row and column manner that was like understandable like uh, for understanding purposes so that was just the purpose of the MySQL it didn't have any other purpose the reason uh, that it didn't have is because I'm going to I'm going to cover MySQL again but we are not going to talk about in uh, about MySQL in this GUI context in this uh, graphical user interface context now there is something that I think I showed you when I installed MySQL and that is when you install it at first you're gonna get a a terminal window as well that terminal window basically comes from here so this is our terminal window now in the upcoming three chapters what we are going to do is we are going to uh, we are going to try to integrate a database with a python applications so these like uh, six chapters i think these six chapters they just serve their purpose and the purpose was just to show you how just to get you familiarized with the sql syntax not anything else not like any you might have like a ton of questions okay how can i integrate this db with my with my uh, application so that is like a more real world kind of approach and this course is just like getting you to job ready so that's why I'm, i i have added those but the reason that i'm talking about it now is because they are way advanced of course i'm going to try to um, break them down as much as possible but I'm not going to waste a lot of time like talking about very little stuff because we need to cover like literally a ton of stuff may, may not be literally but like a lot of stuff in three chapters and there are going to be a lot of a lot of ideas concepts that you're gonna you will have seen them for the first time because what I did what when I um started working with those or creating those ch three chapters was I thought how I can bring a real world sense into this course that's what i've been doing since the start of this course so you're going to get a lot of real world experience i'm going to give you like a, a few uh, csv files and i'm going to show you how you can insert data into your database from a csv file how you can connect your database to your uh, python applications and these are all real world uh, uh, skills that you need to master that's why we're gonna, even though we have talked about SQLite, but that that um, lecture was just like an introduction to SQLite. So you have so you have this idea that SQLite exists. 
right and we are going to dive very very deep into this topic we are going to talk about sql alchemy as well a lot because that is very important that is an object relational mapper tool which we are going to use a lot so uh one more thing that i need to say is that if you have any any problem at any stage in this course i will be available in the q a and uh before actually going and typing anything in the q a this the structure of this course is in this way that whenever you're trying to learn something new and then you take it to the next level if the next level is difficult you can always go back to that phase where you were trying to learn it so whenever you have any problem first uh reference the lectures reference the uh, uh the code that i've provided you with the the, uh, the all of these codes so you can see that you can use any of these files i've tried to provide them in a manageable structure that you know which lecture is which and you can just basically just right click on them and open them up with like a notepad or like a text uh text opening f software so and you're gonna get this so you don't need to have like sophisticated MySQL knowledge to be able to use these files. You can open them with, with VS Code as well. So if you have any problem, go back to lectures. And even if your problem uh, persists, then I will be available in the Q&A to answer those, those issues. And I'm sure you're not going to have many because I'm, I've tried my best to explain everything to the smallest detail. So that's it for this lecture and this chapter. See you in the next three very, 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 very real world difficult and cool chapters. I'm not saying difficult because I need to scare you away because I know that you can do it. And I want you to have a sense of accomplishment that you know that you can do something real world and feel good about yourself. See you then.